I just finished making this twin screw vise for my new work table and I'm really happy with it. Aside from those handles, I pretty much fabricated every single part of this myself. This design is not really original. I think I first saw John Hines do it and I'll put a link to his video in the description. To start with, I needed to make some specialized hardware. This nut is gonna get welded to a large washer, so I ground some flats onto three of the sides so I'd have room for the weld bead to go into. It's not really good to weld zinc plated stuff, so I cleaned off as much of that as I could with a wire wheel. I used some threaded rod and a coupler nut to be able to kind of hold everything tightly together while I welded it since these pieces were pretty small. I'm 100% self-taught when it comes to welding and I am by no means good at it, but what I can do is good enough for this. So what I ended up making was sort of a hat shaped nut washer combo and the reason I undercut into that nut is so I could be able to grind the exterior part of the weld away like this because this entire thing is going to have to sit flush within a gear. Here you can see what it ended up looking like. I needed two of these so after I made the first one I did a second with the exact same method. So the hand wheels are the only parts that weren't left over from scrounge or extra stock that I had from other projects. The wheels themselves are aluminum and they had a one centimeter bore, but the rod that I had on hand was a 5 8 inch, so I had to do a little bit of modification to both to make this work. I drilled out the handle holes to a half inch, which is the widest twist bit that I have. I needed to narrow the rods by an eighth of an inch in diameter, so I started by grinding it down on the bench grinder and then I cleaned it up with a file using the lathe. I got a nice tight and centered fit, but I still needed to add a little groove so I could put in a lock screw. I cut a little groove with an angle grinder, and then I put the handle onto the rod itself, used a drill to widen the hole, and used the screw after that to cut the threads. This wasn't beautiful, but it worked really well. All the gears were 3D printed. I designed them using Matthias Wandel's gear generator program and printed them in PETG with a 40% infill. Right now I'm working on permanently installing those hat shaped nuts onto the threaded rod, which is why I'm setting this all up like it's gonna be when it's permanently installed on the vise. The big coupler nut isn't actually part of the vise face, it's just being used for a jam nut. Likewise, that little piece of plexiglass and the bearing are just being used right now to get correct spacing. This is all about making sure that the hat shaped nut is in the correct place on the threaded rod. I use the big jam nut to make sure it doesn't move, so when I take this apart, I'm able to drill a hole in the right spot to put a pin in. I just used a big nail to lock that nut into place. The nail was cut and filed flush, so I could still slip the drive gear over the nut smoothly. There are also three idler gears. These ones are the exact same size as the two drive gears, but they have bearings in the middle to eliminate as much friction as possible. The front jaw is made from a piece of white oak that I've had kicking around in the shop for about two years. It wasn't quite as wide as I wanted it, so I cut that piece into three lengths and then ripped one of those into two so I could glue up two wider pieces. Then I squared up the ends so I could get them to the final length. Spacing between the gears is critical. If they're too far apart, they may slip against each other, and if they're too close together, they either won't turn at all, won't fit together, or will eventually damage each other. So I laser cut a template. So, fun fact, this template that I'm sticking down right now with double-sided tape is the wrong one. The holes are too close together, and the piece that I'm making right now ended up having to be redone. Luckily, I was still able to use this piece that I'm drilling into right now for the outer part of the vise face. To give an example of how important the spacing is, the holes on this template were each off by about three quarters of a millimeter. This compounded over all five and made it unusable. The outer two holes are for the drive screws and they go all the way through, but the middle three are for the idler pulleys, so they only go partially. I wanted a metal bearing surface between the drive screw and the vise jaw itself. So I needed to cut a small recess for a large washer. So I did this with a top bearing flush trim bit and a little piece of wood that I used as a template and it was held down with some double sided tape. Next I glued in three oak dowels that will serve as axles for the idler pulleys. So that's the back piece of the front jaw, I still needed to make the front piece. Like I had mentioned earlier, I was able to repurpose the part that I had drilled all the holes in the wrong position on. 
I'm gonna use a large hole saw to cut all the recesses for the gears and to start with, I put in holes where the center of the hole saw will go. Next, I used a large Forstner bit to bore in some relief holes that will go in between the overlap on all the large hole saw cuts. Strictly speaking, this isn't necessary, but it will make the hole saw operation go a lot smoother. So the small holes that I drilled earlier are for the center bit that's in the middle of this hole saw to go into. It's really hard to line up a hole saw this big without that. And hole saws, especially this large, aren't really made for super precise cuts, which luckily these didn't need to be, they just have to clear the gears. It's hard to see here because the video is sped up, but this was also with the RPMs on the drill pressed almost at their lowest. The hole saw left a pretty rough cut, so I cleaned these up on the spindle sander and router table with an eighth inch round over bit. Next, this piece was glued onto the back part that I made earlier. I had left the axle dowels a bit long, so next I trimmed them off on the bandsaw and then ran the entire thing through the drum sander again to make sure that they were at the exact same height as the outer part of the jaw face. Now if you watch the John Hines video when he makes his geared vise, he mentions that what is the point of having something like a geared vise if you can't see the gears? So I also put a piece of plexiglass on the front of mine. I used the original laser cut template to index the holes that I needed to drill into the plexiglass. I started by doing really small holes to serve as pilots for where the larger holes would go. The outer two were bored out to receive bearings that the drive screws will go through. The middle three are for screws that go into the idler gear axles. Then there's two more on the outer parts of the plexiglass that are just to screw it to the jaw face. And the edges of the plexiglass were all sanded and rounded over. So here's how the entire thing went together for the first time. When I first turned it, it was a little awkward because I didn't have it clamped tight enough to the bench, but after I resolved that, I found that it operated perfectly. I cut a bevel onto the top of the jaw face, which helps facilitate handsaw use. I still wanted to put two dog holes on the face of the vise. I needed a flat surface for those holes to go into, but unfortunately I just cut most of the flat surface off the top. This was actually all planned. I used my offcut to make a fixture on the miter saw, and then I cut the ends to make the two little pieces that I'm going to glue back on here in a second. This was going to be really awkward to try and clamp on, and I was definitely not going to use pin nails because I'm going to be drilling a hole through this, so I used a couple of dabs of super glue and then put the wood glue on that and waited until the super glue set up so it just kind of clamped the entire thing while the wood glue dried. Then it all got flush cut on the table saw. I took the step of adding some hand holds to the outside of this in case the vise ever binds up and I need to pull it to try and reorient it all and it probably won't be necessary, but I figured this was prudent. I did find them useful when I was setting everything up for the final time, but once the vise was assembled, they really aren't useful for anything, so if you were going to make a vise like this, I'd suggest you skip this step. I also drilled in the 3 quarter inch wide holes that will receive the dogs. These will eventually be used to be able to hold pieces of wood flush to the top of the work table, the other side being supported by something in a T-track which I have yet to install. The inner part of the vise is made from some MDF offcuts. Time will tell if I regret using MDF for this, but for now I think it's fine and this is not a terribly sophisticated piece that would be hard to remake. I did want the top part of this that's visible to be nice looking, so I glued on some white oak so it would match the front part of the jaws. Holes were drilled precisely where they needed to be for the screws to go through. I still needed some adjustable nuts to go on the back of that jaw face, and I decided to weld some up instead of putting nuts inside of wood pieces like John Hines did. Also, I had a bunch of these huge 5 8 inch coupler nuts that I wasn't going to use for anything else. And I know I really should have turned down the RPMs on this right now because I cooked the bit and the metal. <laughs> 
I also forgot to film the next step, but I cut that piece in half. It actually makes the two bases for the two nuts that I need. So that big coupler nut is actually held in place by a piece of threaded rod and another coupler nut at the bottom, and that helps make sure that it stays exactly 90 degrees to the bar stock. So one reason that I use coupler nuts for these instead of smaller nuts is because I wanted a large amount of contact between the nut and the rod itself to help prevent any kind of racking or play in the jaw face. So to ensure that the vise jaws are always parallel, the screws have to operate perfectly in sync with each other. I stuck a piece of parallel stock between the jaw faces and then tightened the two nuts down. I didn't get too scientific with the torque values, but my years as an aircraft mechanic has given me a calibrated elbow, so I'm pretty sure they're about the same. These are only screwed on, so if I ever need to make adjustments, it'll be easy. I was honestly a little surprised, but this thing worked perfectly the first time. One-handed operation was a little awkward at first, but this went away later when the vise was permanently installed onto the bench and there was a little bit of lubrication put between all the bearing surfaces. No adjustment was needed beyond my initial installation. The pressure on the two sides of the jaw face was pretty much exactly the same between the left and the right, and there was almost no racking between the top and bottom. This part here really wouldn't have been necessary if I had cut the screws for the vise a little shorter, but I wanted to leave them as long as possible in case I ever needed to hold something pretty wide. To make space, I was going to have to drill some holes in the stretcher for the tabletop, but I didn't want to lose too much structural integrity, so I glued this beef up on before I drilled the holes. These didn't need to be too precise, so I went with a 1 inch auger in the brace and bit. This thing is so satisfying to use, I really need to consider it more often. I also wanted the vice jaws to sit flush with the edge of the table, which necessitated removing a little bit of the edge, but this was always part of the plan. The bulk of the waste was removed with the jigsaw, but I used a variety of flush cut bits to clean it all up. That jaw face is going to be screwed directly into the tabletop along the upper edge, but I still made two brackets to give it a little more stability. These brackets will get screwed onto the bottom of the tabletop itself, and then the jaw will get screwed to them. This is probably one of the few times I'll ever actually raise this thing all the way up to its full 4 foot height, but it definitely made getting underneath to install these a lot easier. I completely forgot to press record when I screwed these on, but really, they're just screwed to the bottom of the top. You can see what's going on here. I pre-drilled holes in the exact right positions from the back of the jaw, and then I did some recesses on the front because I'm going to be using cabinet screws which do not sit flush. I did the final install of the inner jaw, and I didn't use any glue in case I ever need to replace the top to this bench or move this vise to somewhere else or replace the inner jaw. I sanded the vise jaws smooth to each other and the tabletop, and then everything got a coat of oil-based polyurethane. I only worried about one coat because after all, this is just a shop fixture, and I only really wanted to give the wood a little bit more warmth. I used some extra automotive upholstery leather that I had to line the jaws. I applied the spray adhesive to the smooth, nicer looking side of the leather because I wanted to have the rougher inner side be the part that would hold anything in place because it would provide a little bit more friction. <laughs> 
I obviously did not worry about getting too pretty with cutting away the leather where the screws would go through. So this right here is the final assembly and installation of the outer jaw. I put grease on all the bearing surfaces to minimize wear and friction. I marked the 12 o'clock position on both gears before I took all this apart for finishing. I did this so I could keep the two drive gears as closely synced as possible. It doesn't matter where the positioning of the idler gears is as long as they're all in. I added a thin bead of silicone to the top of the plexiglass to help prevent any sawdust from falling in there and making it look dirty. Then the handles went on for the very last time. So prior to this, all the video has been sped up to three times speed, but the rest of this is just going to be at normal one time speed. The vise works beautifully, but if I were going to do this all over again, there's one thing I would change. I used 5 8 inch threaded rod because it was what I had on hand, but I'd like it if they were a little bit beefier. Nevertheless, the vise is very solid and it functions well. Time will tell how the 3D printed gears hold up, but I can always print new ones or make them out of plywood. When John Hines finished his in the video, he said that it was a little stiff, but he expected it to loosen up over time. I can tell you right now, with all the bearings that are in this, it's not stiff at all. It also works well through one-handed operation, though I think most of the time I'd probably use two, just because it seems less awkward. The vise does hold stuff quite tightly. I'm really having to put a lot of force on it to move this piece of wood anywhere, but I also want to remind you, this entire bench was built as a medium-duty assembly table. Even though I don't think I'm going to do a whole lot of hand tool work on this bench ever, I did want to test it out, and it turns out I could edge plane using this vise and table just fine. Lastly, in case you were wondering, the entire vise projects from the table a little less than 4 inches when the handles are folded in. Anyway, this thing was a lot of fun to make, and I'm really looking forward to using it in the future. I'm also starting to think about redoing the vise on my other bench to be more of a center drive twin screw turbo model, kind of like what Andrew Klein did on his vise. If that's something you'd be interested in seeing in the future, let me know in the comments. And if you made it this far, as always, thanks for watching.